Early in my career, I was able to introduce a variety of sweet corn that actually had uh, high, relatively high quality, but also was able to germinate very quickly in cold soils, which is invaluable to the farmers. People uh, are eating the varieties I've developed, and, and that makes me feel very good that, that I'm having an impact on people's lives. I often say that people eat with their eyes. So the first thing is how attractive the ear looks. Uh, you don't like to eat things that are ugly and unattractive. So husk appearance is a three. Protection is a one. We look at the shape of the ear, the color of the kernels, um, whether the, whether the ear has nice proportions three. and things like that. So that's the first thing we and look then at. Diane. It's really sweet and tender. Um, four, four, four overall. Then we actually do a bite test where we actually uh, bite into the ear of corn and see whether it has good flavor, good tenderness, and those kind of things. Because that is really what people are consuming sweet corn for, is the flavor. Actually, really the pleasure of eating corn. But also able to stand up to the wind and resist diseases because that's what the farmer needs. The consumer wants good taste, the farmer needs things that they can actually harvest. Uh, corn is used for all sorts of things in the economy. Uh, it's used for everything from uh, food additives, uh, starch in foods, sugar in foods, but it's also used for things that you might be really surprised about, plastics, explosives, porcelain, pharmaceutical drugs, all those kind of things have corn as an ingredient. Today we're making ethanol out of it to improve, uh, to fuel our automobiles. And by keeping corn yields high, that keeps the price of the raw materials for those ingredients pretty low, which then gets passed on to the consumer. We have thousands and upon thousands of variants in the field, and we're selecting and looking at all this variation. So here's some of the ornamental corns we're working with. Now these are full, I call them foliage corns for gardens and planters. And this has an unusual stripe here. And then over here we have some that are much darker purple. Now these two separately are okay, but we made some hybrids. We took pollen from this plant and put it on this plant. And let me show you what those hybrids look like. We're getting these pink plants, which may have some potential as an ornamental. As a plant breeder, I'm always looking for differences between plants, so if all of a sudden something's got uh, a, a lot of rust or something like that, then we can select against that and select for something that's better. I go out to the field and I see basically organisms that I've created and that have never ever existed before. Um, and that, that's, that's a very unique opportunity. And when you think about some of the fact that some of those developments, some of those new organisms that have never existed before um, could be useful to people, could help a farmer be more profitable, uh, could help somebody uh, in, in have better nutrition, or could actually help feed hungry people it's, it's awfully exciting.